Jim. Let's see if he goes back to Xavier Storm. He's already scored once. I mean, this kid is electric, three-time All-American. Let's see if he looks his way again. Murky from the shotgun this time. He's going to drop back to pass. He is looking his way. He's going to go that way to Storm. And look at this. He scores again. Can Xavier Storm be stopped? And the former Whitetail is showing why he should be an early first round pick. He really needed to play in this game to solidify that early first round status. But I got to tell you, he's definitely making a case here that he should be the first receiver taken in this year's NFL draft. Man, this guy is electric. Even at 5'7", he's showing what he can do at the next level. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the White Tails Dynasty. And man, we are coming off of our first national championship. Maybe the first of many more we'll have to see. Now, Clemson, you know, I gotta admit, they did not impress me, or did the White Tails impress? Because we shut their offense down, they threw 105 yards in this game i mean that is just remarkable and george jenkins he went 15 of 23 remember he won the heisman trophy and we will go over all that stuff here in this episode as we recap this historic season but green did run for 131 but man what a game by our guys di roberto solidified probably first round status i'd have to say 22 of 28 he outperformed the number one pick george jenkins come this nfl draft and he is on his way and bam cameron capped off his great senior season with a 100 yard gain game 23 attempts and receiving wise xavier storm who just you just saw play in the senior bowl six receptions 63 yards and a touchdown he caps off an amazing year maybe the greatest receiver we've ever seen maybe ahead of marlon yarbrough i love yarbrough but storm was he could have been on another level i think he may have been and then the rest of our team got the job done. So I do want to look around the rest of the NCAA. Navy actually wins the Sugar Bowl. They defeat Oklahoma State. We beat both of these teams this regular season as they beat them by seven points and Navy ends up being number two on the year as Clemson actually dropped down to four after that loss. I don't know why the game does that. I mean, if you're in the national championship and you lose, you should be number two. Notre Dame blows out Auburn. I'm glad we didn't play Auburn because that could have been ugly. Didn't seem like they were very consistent. You guys pointed out in the uh, SEC championship that Georgia blew out Auburn 42 to nothing. That is just ridiculous. Um, so let's look at the Rose Bowl. Texas ends up losing to Arkansas. Arkansas had a historic season. This is probably the best year I've ever seen Arkansas have in any dynasty. And I don't even think they were that impressive. I mean, look at this. Their quarterback went 3 of 14 passing, and they won this game. That is just crazy. And their running back, West, ran for 152 and two touchdowns. So let's look at the Outback Bowl. Nebraska beats Kentucky. Ohio State barely beats Georgia. And then Penn State actually does lose to Texas A&M. That's a bad loss. Michigan and Marquette actually end up playing in a bowl game. And Marquette wins. And look at Marquette. They finished the season 6-7. and seven. That is just terrible. And let's see if anybody else from the Big Ten of note played in a big game. Michigan State actually claws their way back. Wow. I want to look at their schedule because how did they finish 7-6? and six? I believe they were only had two wins when we played them. Ended up with seven on the year. What a great comeback to their season. Wisconsin, they got demoted to the AAC. They finished 9-4 and four on the year as they defeat Toledo. So let's check out the award winners on this season seven, George Jenkins. And I told you that he swept all the offensive awards and he did, but the Bednarik goes to Victor Dimitranco. So he claims one defensive player of the year award. And let's just look at this season. I mean, this is just amazing. He ended up sweeping the defensive player of the year awards as well. The Bednarik, the Nagursi, and the best linebacker. I mean, this guy had a historic season. Now, it is going to be very, very tough to match his production and kind of replace that. I don't think there's been a tougher task at any position. 
I got to admit it. I don't think there's any ever been a player that's been this good on defense and this dominant in one season for me ever. 105 tackles, four sacks, 31 tackles for loss, three pass deflections and interception. I mean, that is just dominance. And there's no wonder why he dominated that award because look at the next guy, David Huffman, who we played against, 40 tackles, 10 sacks, four forced fumbles. That's it. I mean, that's it. Look at the rest of these guys. I mean, they're not even close. I mean, not even close. I mean, this guy had the greatest defensive year I have ever seen. So let's go over to the other awards. Cody Richards, the running back for Arkansas, ends up winning the Doak Walker Award. So I guess that kind of contributes to Arkansas's great season. The Blitnikoff goes to Jameer White as Xavier Storm finishes fourth. He finished with 65 receptions, 1,200 yards, and 12 touchdowns. We'll go over on individual uh, stats as we look later in this episode. And then let's look at some other awards, see if our other guys were there. And Wade actually finishes second in the Groza, probably because he only he never missed a field goal, but his long was only 42. He was barely kicking field goals at all, and he scored 54, 54 extra points. That's how much we scored this year. But Xavier Storm for back-to-back -back years wins best returner. Not sure he really deserved it this year, but he had a ton of kick return yards. Now let's look at the first team All-Americans. Obviously, George Jenkins is there, but Xavier Storm finishes his senior season with this third straight first team All-American bid. And look at this year, 65 receptions, 1,200 yards, and 12 touchdowns. I mean, that this was his second most touchdowns of his career this season and he was actually really really close to I believe eclipsing at one point his yards per game was really really good but I think it kind of dipped off because he had a couple of games where he just had a few receptions and a few yards but he still finished over 1200 last year he had a monster season 1619 touchdowns and this year I believe he had a career high in rushing yeah he did 122 carry 122 yards on six carries and even his first career rushing touchdown. So let's look at anybody else. Did anybody else finish as a first team All-American? Jonathan Simmons does. Now, Simmons is getting a lot of draft buzz. Eight sacks, 25 tackles, 12 for loss. That is a great season. And at defensive tackle, it's even better because defensive tackles don't really get sacks like that. You do see kind of those anomalies some years where defensive tackles do get big sack totals. Like I believe Aaron Donald was a big sack artist in college, and so was uh, Ed Oliver. He was a big defensive tackle that really was dominant at the college level. And like I said, Victor Dimitrankos probably had the best defensive year. That's, that's a no doubt, no brainer first team All-American. Adam Williams, the true freshman, wins first team All-American. He did have a good year, 63 tackles, three sacks, a pass deflection, 10 tackles for loss. That's pretty good. But let's look at the cornerbacks. Now, I think that Coco Bamaye got snubbed here. I think he had an amazing year. But Ali Myers, he actually gets first team All-American, a decent season, 58 tackles. He had plenty of those two interceptions and two pass deflections. I mean, it was a really good season. I'm not sure if it was first team material. And then somehow our kicker, Brian Wade, who's actually going to lose his spot at kicker because look at his power. It's only at 76, 77 accuracy. He's definitely going to lose his spot. He might even transfer to be honest. So let's look at second team. Do we have any second team all Americans? And I don't see any on the offensive side and Justin Royal makes it on defense. So, wow, I think Coco Bamaye really got snubbed this year and you see Justin Royal who was a first team All-American last year with comparable numbers he just had two more interceptions last year now he's second team freshman All-Americans Rudolph Guzman makes it our right tackle he was actually really good this year really good in run blocking way better than what I expected he only had 72 run block but he was sealing the edge pretty much on every inside zone that Bam Cameron would get Frankie Kai freshman all-american this is pretty good for him 16 tackles two sacks not a big stat year but he was definitely doing his job i expect that those numbers to definitely jump next year and then adam williams also gets a freshman all-american just curious to see who will finish with the first team big 10 on our team xavier storm uh jeremy hawkins the senior at center he was our leader on the offensive line simmons dimitrankos williams then Coco Bamaye does get first team all Big Ten, and I expect him to return next year, but he had a monster year to me. A sack, three titles for loss, two interceptions, probably because nobody threw his side. They knew how good he was.
man, he is really, really good. Awareness on 99. Look at the coverage skills. I mean, he is going to be great going into next year. Ali Myers, Justin Royal, Brian Wade. I mean, our whole secondary pretty much won uh, first team Big Ten. Now, Justin DiRoberto did lead the NCAA in passing yards, and some would say he had a down year, but I think he just did his job. It was a new playbook. Remember that. We switch playbooks every single year, so the numbers will look different depending on what playbook we use, but this was his career low in passing touchdowns and not his career high in interceptions, but he was a junior this year, more experience, and they say the longer you do stay in college, the more your draft stock kind of dips as a quarterback, depending on how much you get exposed. And maybe he did get exposed for some of his flaws this year, but he will still be a first round pick. And I think that winning the national championship will definitely boost his draft stock. And I think he is ready for the league. That leads us to the question of who will be next year's quarterback. Well, the top candidates are Marcus Smith. Now, Marcus Smith was a freshman last year or this year, I guess, before we go into next year. You know, the, the deficiency in his game is really his throw accuracy. It's at 66. He's got 84 speed. He has escape ability, remember. He was in on a lot of option plays. He can throw the ball as well. He actually has comparable throw power to Justin Yerberto. And then the lefty Maverick Yarbrough. But the thing about Yarbrough is that he is a defensive player. He can play defense. Don't let him fool you. He might play both sides of the ball. He definitely saw some playing time on defense. So maybe he might make the full-time switch to defense. You never know. Now, Bam Cameron, he played hurt in that national championship and still ran for over 100 yards. He had a great year. I am looking forward to seeing what he does in the future. He is not on NFL radars right now. He is a late, maybe a late round pick. And that's a maybe. And that's because he's undersized. He doesn't have the elite strength, but he was an awesome college player. Let's see if he will make it at the next level. Now, Julian Gonzalez started out the year starting. He finished with almost 300 yards rushing, but not too impressive. And the yards per carry is definitely what kind of, you know, took me, took him off of my radar as far as starting goes. It was kind of low. Apollo St. Vincent was a little better. He's a little more explosive. 93 acceleration compared to uh, Julian Gonzalez, who is 95, maybe higher. But I don't know. Something about Apollo St. Vincent, he seems a lot more explosive when he gets the ball. Julian Gonzalez seems to run a little sluggish. That's kind of weird because when I was running with him, I did not expect him to have higher acceleration and higher speed. It's, I felt like Apollo St. Vincent was faster. Maybe is he lighter? No, even Apollo St. Vincent weighs more. That's just weird to me. But looking at the rest of our guys, not really too many guys ran the ball besides those three at running back. Marcus Smith obviously had rushing yards and so did Xavier Storm. So let's move over to receiver. Storm I already covered 1,200 yards, 65 receptions. Bryce Greer is definitely on NFL radars because of the versatility. Now, let's just look at his career stats. He definitely took a dip this year and mainly because we ran the ball a lot more and a lot more effectively. Remember, he won the Mackey Award last year for the best tight end. And this year, he only had three receiving touchdowns. Definitely took a dip, but what took a boost was his blocking. He showed some elite blocking. I mean, elite. Doubled his pancake blocks from a year ago. And honestly, this guy has shown that he can do it all and he will ask and do whatever the team asks. So I think that's a big, big trait for him going into the NFL. Now, Maurice Jackson, he will be returning for his senior year, and he was not on NFL radars this year, but he had a good year, 746 yards, receiving two touchdowns. That's his career high. I mean, just, just looking at his numbers, maybe his receiving touchdowns were down, but his yards were up, and that just shows that, you know, he's kind of a team player. Francis Smith doesn't have the big-time career, but he had a good one. And he played on the outside. He did what was asked. 6'5", he had speed. I'm going to miss him on the outside. He's a big body guy. We didn't even throw it up to him that much. He just seemed to be open over the middle. And that's one thing I liked about him. He kind of showed kind of a different type of game to his body type. Ramel Williams will probably assume the starting role at tight end if Price Greer does end up declaring. 18 receptions, 268 yards. He will definitely need to play a huge role next year. And depending on the offense, who knows, he might even take 
even bigger role than what we're thinking. Marquise Moore did decent 18 receptions, 287 yards. He's going to be returning as well. I'm going to need a big season from Jasper Sweet. Now he is injury pr prone. You can see his injury is at 40 and he was hurt quite a bit. So we will have to monitor that and see how he does. Trayvon White dropped a few passes when he got in and that kind of deterred me from playing him at all, but we'll have to see. Now, offensive line had a great year. Rudolph Guzman was a freshman All-American. Remember, Derry Gaston was the left tackle who was really good, 6'9", 329. Eric Shedd, a good guard, but we're gonna miss the next two. Frank Duncan might go to the NFL. He is only 77 overall, but NFL scouts are just salivating over his potential. So he might leave early along with Jeremy Hawkins, who is a senior. He won't be an early guy, but he will probably get drafted next year because of his versatility on the offensive line. Now, defensively, we already highlighted the great season from Victor Dimitrankos. He had over 100 tackles. He's going to be hard to replace. Ali Myers also had a good year. He's going to be back at free safety in his first year starting there. Justin Royal will be back. David Wyatt is a really good NFL prospect. Now, NFL scouts think he needs one more year under his belt, but he has flash greatness, and that's kind of the thing with him. I mean, he has shown up in games, but some games you he's kind of hard to find. He would just need to find that consistency in his junior year. Marquise Dorsey is a solid outside corner. I don't think he's great, though. He gets burnt quite a bit, but I think he was good enough this year to just get by, and Ali Myers being that free safety, that help over the top, definitely helped him out. Now, Bobby Mathis had a pretty good season. He didn't put up the sack numbers, but he was always around the ball. I fully expect him to declare for the NFL draft because NFL scouts are definitely really excited about that size, 6'7", 263, and he can move. I mean, he is really good. Now, Jonathan Simmons is getting first round consideration now. Some scouts even have him as a mid first rounder because of the year he had. Eight sacks, like I said, doubling the total from last year. And what teams like is just that progression from year one to two to three. Look at the progression there. I mean, he is just, he's just been amazing for us. And at one point, he was our best recruit ever. Now, Charles Davis played a little bit in the slot. He got in and he actually had 20 tackles. He was a guy that I probably never spoke about, but he actually was a really good slot corner for us. So look for him to make moves next year. Coco Bamaya, like I said, he was shafted as far as All-Americans go, but I guess that's because people just didn't throw to his side, but he was dominant all year. Now, Anderson Reed kind of took a step back, I think. He had more tackles and more tackles for loss, but I think getting after the quarterback was his bread and butter. He definitely did not do that this year. And even to add to that, he put, pretty much played every single snap this season. I mean, he didn't really sub out too much, but I'm going to be looking forward to him next year. Now, Tamari Jamison will assume the starter at middle linebacker come next year. He is only 72 overall. I need a big offseason from him in order to really solidify him as a starter. Frankie Kai had a good year. I expect him to take over for Jonathan Simmons. Uh, and then kind of rounding out the list on defense. Like I said, Maverick Yarbrough, watch out for him. He can play defense. He finished the year also with six tackles total. He played a little bit of special teams, but watch out for him. He can play both sides of the ball. And then watch out for the future at cornerback. We're talking about John Tay Batson. He is a speed guy, a redshirt freshman. I will definitely need to see him progress in the offseason. So I do want to just look around the NCAA because I will be making changes to the Big Ten next season because I do want to make our conference a little better and maybe even, you know, our side of the conference a little better. I think, you know, the issue right now is just geographically. I just don't think it makes sense. And I do want to make sense of it a little bit. Navy went 11 and two. They will actually move to the Big Ten East next year. So they will be on that side. And I'm probably going to move one of these teams over to the West. Marquette does avoid demotion. And so does Cincinnati. They went two and 10, but they actually beat Army head to head. So Army will get demoted. But just looking at other conferences, for example, you know, the ACC has really good balance. They finished with five teams with double digit wins. Clemson, Notre Dame, Florida State on the Atlantic, and then the Coastal Marshall actually held their own in the ACC. Now, Marshall is a team that I actually am considering moving into the Big Ten. They are in Ohio. It makes complete sense. 
and I think I might do it and then end up moving maybe another Conference USA team to the ACC to kind of compensate there. I have been demoting and promoting teams based on their win-loss record, but nobody has really shown coming from maybe a mid-major team that has really shown up and kind of dominated at the next conference level. And I think Marshall is the closest I have. And I don't really know what they did last season, but this season, they really had a good season. They lost a couple of games, but they were all close. They lost a big one here at the end of the season of Florida in the bowl game. But besides that, they had a really, really good season. So I plan on moving them to the Big Ten. I'm looking at the American. Wisconsin actually finished 9-4. and four. They did not impress. I'm going to leave them down in the American for now because they did not really do that well. And then the top two teams in the American, Northwestern and Rutgers, that's not really two impressive teams. And I don't know what I'm going to do here, but I need to make the Big Ten stronger in some type of way. But also I need to make the Big 12 stronger because look at the Big 12. Now they have two teams, maybe three on this side, including Oklahoma who dominated here in that division. But the other division, it was all Texas. So I need to fix that. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but maybe a Big 10 team will move to the Big 12 and maybe a Big 12 team will move to a Big 10. I'm not really sure, but I need to fix something there. Now, heading into the offseason, as far as recruiting goes, we do have two future cornerbacks in Barry Willis and Cameron St. Clair. St. Clair is more of a slot corner. Remember, I have preferred walk-ons, and Lamar Austin is going to be one of those preferred walk-ons. I'm going to rename him to one of the recruits you guys submitted a couple of videos ago. You'll have to watch out for him. I think right now, actually, Cedric Myrick is another one of those guys. It's only CPU-generated guys who will get renamed. Jared Robinson, I believe, was a custom recruit. And then Chase Donaldson will be renamed as he was a computer-generated guy as well. So looking at the remaining guys on our board, we have Delroy King going into the offseason. He is probably either headed to Minnesota or the Whitetails. We are 715 points behind. The number one tackle in the nation, it's a three-way race. I believe this one probably will be the hardest because I have a feeling that South Carolina or Washington will go all in for him. He is 72 overall. But the guy I really, really want, and it's because we're probably losing Bobby Mathis and Jonathan Simmons, a really old villain. Now, we're behind 1,700 to Michigan State because of the visit they had late in the year, but I think we need to sell out for him and really go all in. Another guy, Damon Trek. Now, I could definitely see a defensive front of Damon Trek and Frankie Kai for the next at least three years. You can just see he's kind of impressive, 6'5", 250. And we are the lead for him, so it might be a little easier. And then Terry Owens, a tight end. We will need another tight end. It helps that he's from Green Bay. We are in the lead. And then Brad Christian, another guy, another athlete. We are probably going to get him. I can't believe he hasn't committed by now, but he is an all-around athlete. This is another one of those preferred walk-ons. He will be renamed to somebody, one of you guys. And then some other guys we have here, Kyle Harris. He's just another guy, another receiver. But I am looking forward to getting these guys and kind of developing them. I like the guys that are low overall and end up surprising you. And then Michael Muse, another preferred walk-on who will be renamed. And it looks like we are in the lead for him as well. So one last thing before ending the recap here in Season 7, we do have a coaching upgrade. And we have been up upgrading just strictly uh, recruiting. And that's kind of what I'm going to keep doing here until we get kind of the whole tree unlocked. I don't want to give myself any upgrades for gameplay because I don't, do not want any advantage. And just looking at what we're doing here, we're probably going to just upgrade the points. And that upgrades the other, unlocks the other tier. So that's going to be good for us. So staying on coaching, I fully expect Adam Miller and Quintaris Jones, our OC and DC, to get plenty of job offers in the offseason because Adam Miller, look at this. I mean, 21 out of 126 offensive coordinators. He was amazing this year as far as calling plays, especially getting Bam Cameron involved. I think that the thing is, I think he's learned. I think he's learned to be a coach now. He just needed the tutelage, and now I think he's ready to go back into head coaching. But the hottest commodity on the market is probably going to be Quintaris Jones. He is now an A-plus prestige, eighth out of 126 as far as defensive coordinators go, as far as points per game allowed. I mean, he is going to be 
probably the hottest coach on the market and I fully expect him to move on. So we are going to have a new offense and probably a new defense come next year. So it's going to be interesting. So that will do it here in the season seven recap. I am excited for the future of this program. It's definitely going to be a big program shift now that we were in the national spotlight. And now we have NFL prospects on our roster. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what the future holds for this program. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I be trying to do me, but they be trying to copy though. Only problem with that is they not me though. People act cool, but really they be shifty though. They say they got your back, but they ain't even behind me though. I be low key, but police be trying to find me.